discuss about to derive distribution of function of one variable uh, one variable that variable means here it would be random variable and the random variable would be what uh, here uh, generally we will talk from the continuous perspective for discrete perspective we had already discussed that uh, that one is dealing with summation approach and uh, just a look into uh, pre images of the corresponding observed value of the random variable and uh, through that pre image approach you can easily find derived distribution uh, for discrete random variable here in case of continuous random variable it would be totally different approach so here first we need to find cdf because uh, we know that cdf is directly dealing with probability up to certain or arbitrary x so that's why we have to first come up with the idea of cdf of the corresponding derived random variable and after that we will try to find corresponding pdf or derived pdf we will call it okay so coming to outline of today's lecture first uh, i will discuss about here uh, that uh, part of previous lecture that uh, in last lecture we will we discuss about uh, independency of any two random variable so if uh, x and y happen to be uh, any two continuous random variable from the same experiment then we say that there are various variant of defining uh, what we call it independency so we will say that x or uh, y are independent if you are seeing that uh, the conditional density of x given y it is just uh, that means uh, first observation of y is not going to affect the uh, happening of x that means the dense conditional density of x given y it would be just equal to uh, density of x then we say that uh, x and y happens to be independent independent to each other okay so this one approach we had already seen that there was one more approach suppose uh, x and y happens to be independent to each other then it is very easy to find joint distribution of x y uh, how by multiplying the corresponding uh, marginal density so uh, in the case of independent random variable so how you can get joint distribution just by multiplying the uh, individual distribution that density of x and density of y multiply these two together you will get so these are the uh, uh, two variant of uh, come uh, identify whether the given uh, set of uh, two random variable happens to be independent or no so we had already seen that in today's lecture we will discuss about that weak dependency so what is so what is happening that if you are having any two random variable x and y then uh, what is happening that these two may be dependent so these two may be dependent so what is happening that we have to come up with another random variable z and with respect to that that means we know the partial observation of this one that we uh, in, in partial information through observation of z and based on that we will see that the conditional random variable x given z and y given z it would be independent independency so we will see independence between so given z uh, we will try to see that uh, x and y would be independent to each other so that uh, independency we are calling it conditional independency so generally if you talk about uh, simplest bayesian network or simply if you call it marco uh, marco chain or uh, marco uh, uh, Marco model simply what you call it so very simple sim sequential model you can observe like this way uh, so evolution pattern you observe like this way so suppose this one is the first state x1 x1 then you go you transit to next step that uh, we are calling it as x2 so transition is happening in a very sequential manner so after that you transit to this state and so like this kind of pattern so simply call it transition at time 2 and uh, so this x uh, x2 can take any value x3 can take any values all these are here uh, x1 x2 x3 happens to be uh, random variable and uh, generally we are just leaning towards uh, what we call it uh, random process so it will go on like this way this transitioning a very simple kind of transition we are taking it so if if we are observing this a graphical representation of transition so uh, what is the relation between x1 and x2 anyone anyone would like to say that what is the relation between x1 and x2 directly if you see transition from x1 to x2 what you can comment over x1 and x2 what kind of relation x1 and x2 might have anyone anyone 
would you like to comment it just see from the function ap approach it is what kind of it is one kind of transition you uh, at hand you are having idea about uh, x1 at time one okay so and from x1 you are moving towards x2 so that means transition is transition is happening there is a transition so simply we can say that uh, x2 would be function of x1 So this is the transition. It may be linear function. It may be nonlinear function. So what situation is there? It may, it may be linear function. So like uh, linear function means simple matrix would come here or a simple a scalar quantity would come here. Simply you can say that one scalar quantity if it is a linear function. So better uh, uh, I may write here matrix. So this mat a scalar is one by one matrix. So we know that. So there is no any problem in writing capital. Okay. So so simply we see that x2 is a function of x1. Likewise, if I talk about x3, uh, x3 when we are observing x3, x3 actually it is a, when x2 transit, it transit uh, and then it go to x3. So that's why we say that uh, x3 is actually it is a function of call it f1 first function function also might be might be different so x3 is function of x2 through this transferring approach so uh, here uh, but what we observe x1 is x2 is actually function of x1 so you can say that it is, it is a composition of what we call it uh, f2 and f1 with argument x1 composition function so you can say that if you are starting from x1 and this transitioning is happening then you can observe that x3 is function of x2 okay so this kind of uh, relation you observe so uh, all here uh, previous um, future things depends upon uh, history history present and past what history it simply present and past what we call it past generally we are calling it history at present where we are uh, okay so future always depends on present and past if you are having this kind of situation okay but what is happening that we are trying to talk about conditional independency so let us discuss conditional independency first then i will discuss about uh, derived distribution of function of one random variable uh, after that we will discuss in detail about derived distribution of function of several random variable in next class so coming to uh, first part that conditional independency how we define it so we define it like this way suppose we are having uh, three random variable x and y and z so uh, we are observing first joint uh, jointly continuous random variable x and y and we will say that these two random variable happen to be conditionally independent with respect to third random variable z if conditional um, density of x given y z it is just uh, equal to conditional density of x given z so simply we say that x is independent of y conditionally here conditionally we say that because your conditional situation is coming so here focus on this definition it is very much important so here we simply say that x is independent of y conditionally but x is not independent of z x is having dependency with respect to z but uh, and likewise also x or y are also it may be uh, x y might be dependent it might there might be dependency but we are talking here conditionally dependent with respect to third random variable z okay so this is the definition of conditional independent that means uh, conditional density of x given y z if it happens to be just uh, conditional density of x given z then we say that x and y are conditionally independent and vice versa okay so if you further why we are talking about this one so it is helping to find joint distribution of x y and z it will help to find joint distribution of x y and z how we see so <clears throat> this is the first uh, starting definition of conditional independency of any two random variable with respect to third random variable z and it is just equivalent to this one you can get uh, joint conditional distribution of x and y it is product of conditional distribution x and conditional distribution of y with respect to z <coughs> so all these are here uh, further you can 
it can imply that regarding the uh, what we call it cdf approach conditional cdf approach condition on z so all these are very much equivalent to each other easily we can see, we can see that the question would be obvious here why we are introducing conditional independent so question would be here simplify here suppose uh, i am asking that we are having here you can see that there are three random variable x y z so in order to understand this system which is dealing with these three random variable then we need to know what is the explicit expression of joint distribution of x and y z so anyone would like to suggest how you can compute joint distribution of x y z anyone you know the multiplication rule uh, we had already discussed so how you can find joint distribution of x y and z anyone if you are listening then try to answer it how we can write joint distribution of x y and z because in totally here we observe three random variables so uh, we are willing to write <coughs> joint distribution through observational approach that means you are free to observe any of the random variable first whether x or y or z so who would like to answer that are you listening me or not i am asking a question what what would be your approach to write joint distribution how you can write joint distribution rakesh would you like to answer it if you are listening just try to answer it say just yes or no if you know say yes try to answer it if you don't know say no don't know okay fine any other would like to answer it don't know it is very simple that in i had already discussed about uh, several time i used to say that in the same from uh, starting from module 1 i used to say same approach it is very simple thing to define joint property or joint distribution or joint probability mass function or joint probability density function whatever things would be joint will come so it is all about what approach your approach would be very much sequential or very much chain rule chain rule kind of approach or multiplication rule later we will call it better chain rule or sequential rule those are giving geometrical visualization so those looks very interesting multiplication rule is very much algebraic so doesn't give much geometrical visualization so always you can call as per your convenience what what fits you you can proceed with that so chain rule approach you can say that so it is already here given that with respect to z that means we are having information about z we are observing z first so by default that means we know the density of z so what we know first we will write that so we will write density of z okay because we know about that we have already observed it so we know the density what is density of z so after that someone is willing to observe x if uh, then other person will try to observe y depends upon what you want to observe so we don't know we we had only idea that z was observed so that's why density of z was clear to us so if z z was observable okay so density was also known to us so after that suppose we try to observe x so what is happening that that means we have to come up with conditional density of x given z for z has been already observed so we are writing uh conditional density of x given z okay then after that anyone would like to see uh, just uh, try to say that what what remaining thing you are having what then after once you here you can see that x and y has been observed so this one if you talk i if i ask what in together if you take what does it talk about it is talk about joint probability density of x and z through this sequential order so we have already observed x and z then what is the remaining thing only y is the remaining thing so we have to observe y so in order to observe y 
prior to y observation of y x and y x and z has been observed so we will ha have conditional density of y given z and x okay so this situation will come here given y given x and z so if you talk about this representation here it is talking about condition on two random variable okay condition on two random variable. so that would look little bit cumbersome to compute it because when you are dealing to find conditional density uh, where condition on two random variable so it is what if two random variable in together if you take that would define a plane what we call plane or surface also you can call it it is very much difficult to uh, proceed with that so what you have to do here we are putting a condition that we say that x and y are we are putting assumption saying that x and y are conditionally independent so if you are putting that idea we say that x if if x and y are conditionally in short i will write it conditionally independent ci with respect to z then what will happen this notation it will convert it into in very simple form it will, it will be converted into density of y given z of y okay so the joint density is taking very simple form notation what is that the joint density of x y z is written as it is equal to density of z times conditional density of x given z times conditional density of y given z so you can easily see that due to conditional independency of x and y with respect to z the representation of or computation of joint density of x and y z is very simple so that's where we are coming with conditional independent approach okay sometimes also it may possible uh, during that conditional independency of discrete random variable we had already seen that and uh, it may also possible if x y might be independent but if you introduce conditioning over z then x y conditionally may be dependent so that example we had already seen as well so such scenario i haven't taken that example here in this case but in in, in case of discrete we had taken that example you can recall that example uh, from there so we will discuss further about a uh, few example where we observe conditional independence and it is very much applicable in order to uh, process this system so what are those examples so you can see one example is like here it is coming like this way so you can see this uh, evolutionary system it is very sim one of the simplest evolutionary system what you observe here here you say that you are starting from x1 t equal to 1 is your current time and it transit to x2 then it transit to x3 then it transit to x4 then it transit to uh, up to xt okay at time t so here capital i have taken it in sense that here all x size happens to be random in nature so this x1 take any value it may take any value any value from the what we call it range of the random variables so all these are x size so random in nature so, so simply it is a uh, what we call it a simple bayesian network or it is a network with where uh, each x size is random in nature so here uh, our job would, would be what our job is to find joint distribution of these t number of random variable how we can find joint distribution so various approach we have to apply it in order to find joint distribution it is very difficult to compute joint distribution uh, through multiplication rule what i discussed it would be very difficult to compute directly okay so how you can find joint distribution so you have to come up with idea that you put it here condition that uh, 
x x of t plus 1 given x t t plus 1 is the future time x t t is the current time it is what independent of past so simply if you say that x of t plus 1 it is definitely function of x1 x2 up to xt so if, if simply if i call it if you, xt plus 1 i am taking any uh, arbitrary random variable among these t number of random variable so if i say uh, then does xt plus 1 depends upon previous uh, uh, random variable definitely it depends it depends on so it is function of simply in short we will write it it depends upon x1 it depends upon x2 it depends upon x3 it depends upon xt xt that one is the at time t current time what we call it so this situation is coming so there is a dependency clearly there is a dependency but what is happening that once we put condition on the present this xt is the present condition on the present then it just becomes independent of the past xt plus 1 given t in this uh, example i am talking it is independent of anyone would like to highlight or ask why it is independent of history or past would like to ask so independent of history what what is the history history is xt is the current and then x1 onward up to xt minus 1 these are the history these are the past so it is independent of in this chain it is so this kind of uh, independency it is definitely a condition it is not an independency because simply there is no independency between these random variable there is a conditional independency so given present future is independent of past given present future is independent of part past so this one is having a conditional independency so this conditional independency uh, it is having a law uh, we will study that in uh, last module module 4 we call it marco property marco come up with this property he was a very famous mathematician marco property we call it okay this property we are calling it marco property so it is an example of marco chain what we call it so here all about in marco chain or marco model or also you can say that it is a marco model so in marco model what we do we try to find joint distribution of these red variable so if you are willing to find joint distribution we see that x1 is not preceded by any random variable okay so we know the distribution of x1 it is not uh, having any condition so easily we can write distribution of x1 x1 now transit to x2 that means x2 is having dependency over x1 okay so that's where we will write conditional density of x2 given x1 okay now after that x3 x3 is having dependency on x2 but given x2 x3 is independent of x1 because why because x2 has already inherited x1 so that's way given x2 x3 is independent of x1 so here third term would, would come here so if you are right willing to write density definitely third term would be uh, conditional density of x3 given x1 x2 would come but we know from the marco property that our conditional independency uh, better we call it here right now conditional independency so conditional density of x3 given x1 and x2 it would be just equal to uh, so condition it would be just equal to conditional density of x3 given x2 so that means x3 is independent of x1 given x2 x3 is independent of x1 given x2 
okay so that conditional independence between x3 and x1 is coming so conditional independence there is a conditional in independence between x3 and x1 but there is no independence directly between x1 and x3 but there is a conditional independence so that's why here in place of writing this one you will write the third term, this one because it is easy to compute this here uh, conditioning is coming through only a single random variable so that's why likewise if you process it up to if you arrive it here so you can say that x t is function of x capital t it is function of x1 x2 up to t minus 1 x of t x t minus 1 so what is happening that if you put conditioning over x suppose this one is the uh, penalty moment random variable x t minus 1 so given x t minus 1 x t would be independent independent of all these history or past so that's where uh, we are writing this conditional density so this uh, this approach to compute joint density of x1 x2 up to x t it is very much simple thanks to conditional independence property of x size okay due to conditions so that's why this property is really interesting in marco model so this simply simplest example of marco model what we call it it is simplest example of Marco model and here time is taking discrete fashion you can say that it is discrete time Marco chain okay now we will take one more example hidden Marco model so that will come to here so just delete it everyone know that uh, in last class I had already mentioned that uh, that if you want to search in google in google search there is a listening segment in there so if you speak something then desire sentence will be searched if you see anything so what is happening that their speech would be converted into text so what thing it is doing the hidden marker model is doing that concept that uh, transformation is done by hidden marker model so uh, this is the example of hidden marker model uh, likewise in youtube that someone is uploading any lecture or any uh, video there in youtube and just uh, and there would be a speech uh, so through auto generated generation process you can generate subtitle for that video easily you can generate so the, all those are what thanks to that hidden marker model so what is happening that so this x size what we are calling it uh, the observation that you are able to see from your eyes so these are the front exam observation but what is happening in the brain something abstract representation of those observation are happening and those abstract representations are having dependency this chain kind of dependency we can say that it is chain dependency and hence conditional independency would come here so the among the uh, abstract representation of so you can simply call it this jedi happens to be uh, abstract representation of this observation this job observation so here what is happening that again we need to find joint distribution of all xi and jedi so we need to find joint distribution or uh, always we have to find joint distribution so first uh, what is happening x1 is coming what is the uh, abstract representation of x1 it is z1 so uh, definitely there is a z1 is it is happening back latent z is meant for latent representation it is happening back to the back of the mind okay in the brain it is happening so that means uh, the x1 is having clear dependency on z1 so you can write this joint probability uh, again uh, by utilizing the conditional independency case you can able to write this in the in this simple form the joint distribution so we will see that the computational approach in marco random process in hidden marco process in module 4 we will see all this so these are the motivation to study more about conditional independence so, okay so now we are coming to next part of this lecture that we will talk about derived distribution for function of one random variable so it is also really interesting because we know that it is not always possible to cover all the randomness through given set of random variable or so what we have to go to discuss further about derived distribution we have to enlarge the class of distribution so that's why we are coming with derived distribution so derived distribution 
Uh, first, uh, I will discuss uh, from uh, definition is very simple. In the discrete case, we had already seen that. So I will mm, dis uh, discuss definition in a one line. After that, I will talk about examples. Okay, various examples would be here. So here, so consider uh, suppose x is a continuous random variable. Okay, by default here, right now, just remember that we are studying continuous random variable. So by default, if you mention random variable, continuous random variable would be there. Okay and x is a continuous random variable and we are defining a function of x as g of x we are calling it y y is a function of x so here clearly we can say that y happens to be a random variable why because why it is a function of x a random variable and hence we are calling y is a derived random variable also you can call it it is a derived random variable because it is it has been derived from the existing random variable x okay now we need to compute distribution of y so how we can compute so first we need to compute uh, probability cumulative distribution function of y uh, in two different approach uh, why we are going to different approach logic is already uh, here you can see it like this way so what is happening that y happens to be derived random variable so in order to compute uh, cdf pdf we first compute uh, derived cdf so from the definition of cdf what we do the capital f of y it would be what it is talking that probability that derived random variable y is observing value up to what is the probability that derived random variable y is observing value up to y and what we do here just here, this y is arbitrary, arbitrarily fixed, okay. And here we focus on this. What is this y? This y happens to be function of g. So we will replace y by g of y. And this one is at a time it is fixed. So we simply what we do here we we simplify it. So we can simplify it. We can write it this property as property that x is observing value up to g inverse of y. So here it is not just inverse function g may or may not be invertible so here g inverse of y it is talking about notation of inverse image of y that means find the all the images of y under the function of g so it's called this one is the inverse images of y inverse image of y that means you are willing to if you are willing to write in the framework of uh, um, set theory you can say that it is a collection of all x such that g of x equal to y this is the inverse image of y it is not uh, what we call it inver inverse of the function of g it is inverse image of y okay so that means uh, uh, here definitely uh, few x you will see that so here what does it talk about so if you simplify this one uh, if you are able to simplify and after simplification you see that it is taking an explicit form that it happens to be just function of y if it is an explicit form in the as a function of y so how you can find derived distribution of y or pdf of y just differentiate this h of y you will get uh, pdf of y by differentiating if it is explicit form explicitly we are able to uh, find cdf of y then we can easily find cdf of pdf of y by differentiating the this explicit function of y okay but always it is not possible so what we have to do we have to go for second approach what does second approach do so here uh, again go through definition of cdf it is talking about that uh, y is observing value up to a small y and you can translate it like this way uh, further you will come in, here and if you observe here what does it talk about it is saying that property that x is observing will up to g inverse of y so you can interpret this one as a cdf of x so here suffix x is coming so because here random variable x is involved so it is just so we are able to write cdf of y in term of cdf of x but we don't uh, go further because if you get an explicit form then this one is in approach one we had already seen that but here we are unable to find explicit form so what we have to do implicitly we will differentiate this one with respect to y definitely it would be function of y in innermost argument happens to be y so despite of being cdf of x yeah, and this uh, cdf would be function of y innermost argument y because innermost argument is y so we need to differentiate this uh, cdf with respect to y in order to compute 
derived distribution of probability density function of y so we are going to do that so that means we are differentiating this one it has been expressed like this way we are differentiating this one with respect to y so uh, how we differentiate this one we are differentiating this one with respect to chain rule so we know that uh, here g inverse of y it is uh, one kind of thing you can mimic it like here what i had written here it is x g inverse of y is something like x but remember that this x is not may not be unique it is one kind of unique inverse so so due to that just what is happening that we are uh, through chain rule apply here bracket is coming in order to control the sign of the derivative this derivative this derivative may be negative may be positive so just in order to control that we have taken bracket otherwise there is no any so so first we are differentiating this one with respect to y so this one is what it is, it is something like this so what we do we differentiate cd of, of x with respect to x so what would be just uh, we will get pdf of x so this one is the pdf of x with the argument this one and, and through chain rule also further we have to differentiate this x with respect to y okay so that's where this term is coming so this what is name of this term anyone if you talk about what is name of this term this term we are calling it jacobian of transformation transformation is g g so it is jacobian of transformation that you are transforming from um, x to y jacobian we we call it jacobian of transformation in case of function of one variable Jaco jacobian of g or jacobian of transformation better call it transformation or transform call it transformation okay jacobian so this jacobian factor and if you ask why this sign is coming uh, in the example things would be clear it is just coming in order to control this sign sometimes it will be positive sometimes it would be negative but we know density is always a, a non negative function always must be greater than or equal to 0 and density of x it was involved there so there was no issue with sign so we have to put sign on the jacobian term one example here we will take it we will try to find the right distribution for uh, a random variable which is uniformly distributed over a given continuous set suppose so suppose x is uniformly distributed over the interval 0 to 1 so that means so we know the density of x what is the density of x uh, density of x would be it will take value 1 between when x is between 1 to 0 and outside 1 interval 0, zero to 1 uh, density is 0 okay so we know the density of x and it is 0 otherwise okay now we are defining a function of x as a square root of x okay so why is a square root of x then first we have to prior to compute pdf of y we have to find pdf of y we have to see if for given value of x what possible value of y may take so here if x is taking value 0 to 1 if you do a square root of those then that means that that will also fall between 0 to 1 the for each that means for each x which is taking value from 0 to 1 y will take value again from 0 to 1 so for each observation of x in within this y is also observing value from this same interval 0 to 1 but observation pattern is different that distribution pattern would be different so that we need to compute so from the first i will go for both approach first approach that we, when we are able to uh, write cd of, of y explicitly as a function of y so we try to find cd of, of y from the definition it will be written like this way and we know that y is what it is a square root of x so we are uh, substituting y as a square root of x and here we do simplification we do a squaring both sides so this would be probability that a random variable x is observing value up to y square so what does it talk about so it is saying that the argument is y square so it is just talking about what it is cdf of uh, x with argument y square it is very simple to see that it is just this you can replace it by a and later you will say that you can call it a then it would be f of capital f of x okay uh, capital f of a and a is what y square so you can replace it like so how we compute cdf it is talking about probability up to this argument so that means we integrate the pdm 
up to this argument we know that pdf is taking non zero value between 0 to 1 and we don't have to bother about outside 0 to 1 because pdf is zero so that's why we are integrating from 0 to y square in order to compute this pdf and uh, between 0 to y square what is pdf pdf is equal to 1 so just we can write it one there is no any issue so integrate it after integration what we are getting we are getting an explicit form of cdf of y that one is y square so easily you can get pdf of y by differentiating it and that would be twice of y so easily you can say that here y is no more uniformly distributed it is having this non-uniform distribution twice of y so you can plot here like this way uh, x is uniformly distributed this is the distribution of x uh, it is taking value between it is pdf of x taking value between 0 to 1 here 0 is here uniformly distributed and that means height is constant height it is 1 okay this one is pdf of uh, x and now what is the pdf of y it is having different distribution y is also taking value between 0 to 1 but distribution is linear function of y pdf of y is what it is twice of y so twice of y it is something like this this is the non uniform distribution what you observe this is the distribution of y what you observe okay outside 0 to 1 sorry this point is 1 not 0 this point is 0 so this is the distribution of y it has been changed from so usually you can say that x has been transformed to y as a non-uniform distribution x is having uniform distribution but y is having non-uniform distribution you can delete uh, from the function perspective you can delete this line okay now we will go to talk about second approach what is second approach that means uh, suppose we are unable to find explicit form of uh, cdf of y so in that case what is happening that that we are stuck up to here we are stuck here up to here somehow it may possible that we are unable to proceed further okay so in that case uh, through jacobian principle usually we can find that means uh, what we do uh, in so in order to differentiate this one we will differentiate this one with respect to y and we will apply here chain rule then uh, the de this derivative is what it is just density of it would be density of x with argument y square it would be density of x with argument of y square times this jacobian vector uh, density of uh, the derivative of y square with respect to y okay because we are differentiating with respect to y and we know that um, here you can write it d y square by dy and we know that what is the density of x it is always one whatever argument it would there it would be always equal to one density of x is one so that's where this value is equal to one and if you differentiate y square with y it would be twice of y and we know that modulus is here uh, equal to twice of y why why because y is always taking value between 0 to 1 so it is 0 to 1 y is positive so that's a twice of y so that's why we got density of y it is equal to twice of y the second approach is re really interesting in sense that what you do you multiply the cdf of x with corresponding argument with this jacobian factor so you have to focus on the jacobian only but first one is little bit that you have to get explicit form if you it is not always possible to get explicit form of um, cdf of y so i will take one more example here you will see that difference so here John is driving from Boston to New York a distance of 180 miles. His average speed is uniformly distributed between 30 to 60 miles per hour. Uniform distribution we observe that. Then we have to find the PDF of the duration of the trip. So a simple question would be that uh, if you denote uh, uh, a speed, here a speed is given to us and what is the density of x density of a speed is given to us what is the density of a speed anyone what is the density of a speed it is uniformly distributed it is uniform means constant between 30 to 60 that means what is that 
1 by 30. It is constant density when x is from this interval. Otherwise, it is 0. Other outside interval, this one 0. Density is given to us. We have to find the duration. Duration generally you can, uh, duration which, uh, means time. You can say time. What is the uh, a speed? How we define it? A speed? We say that it total distance divided by duration. So from here we see that t also you can say that it is y because y is given to derive distribution representation. So that's where t equal to 180 by x. So x is uniformly distributed. We have to find the distribution of t or distribution of y. That we have to find it. So here y happens to be function of uh, x then the and hence y is a derived distribution. Now what is y? It is 180 by x. So we have to find CDF of, first we have to find CDF of y and then we will find PDF of y. So how to find CDF of y? Explicitly we can find CDF of y. How? We can find like this way in approach 1. We know the, from the definition of CDF, the CDF of y, it would be tall, what? It will be probability y, that y is observing value up to a small y and here y is what? It is a function of x. That means y is equal to 180 by 100, uh, 180 by x. So we are replacing. After that, we are simplifying it. So after simplification, we observe this tail probability. This one is the tail probability. So we never proceed with tail probability. Always we try to come up with CDF approach. So what we do uh, to take benefit of CDF of x. Okay. So that's where. So we will express again in the form of CDF. So this one is the CDF in the form of so 1 minus this one through that. Uh, um, several time I had already discussed how this one is coming so through that what we have to do x is what uniformly distributed so easily we can compute this one so how we can compute that means 1 minus that this is the density of x with argument 180 by y that means we have to in order to find this one how we can find uh, just differentiate the pdf of x 32 180 by y because we prior to 30 and after 60 and uh, density is 0 so we just focus on between 30 to 60 that's why we are taking this uh, integration and simplify it after simplification what you got you got the explicit form of cdf of y that one is 2 minus 6 by y square okay so you are having explicit form of uh, cdf of y just differentiate this one with respect to x then you will get your PDF. You will get your PDF. So this is your PDF. Easily you got it. There is no any issue. Now this one is the first approach. Thanks. We are lucky that we got the explicit form of uh, CDF of Y. Okay. It is always not possible. Suppose we, the, uh, there is no explicit form. It is implicitly defined. We are stuck up to here. Okay, so after that, what, how we can find density of y? So uh, here, the same magic we will apply. That means in order to find density, we multiply the density of x, okay, with Jacobian. With Jacobian. Here, x is, this x is just equivalent to 180 by y. Okay, this x is meant for this 180 by y and we are uh, just uh, doing uh, finding this Jacobian. So here what is density? Density is 1 by 30 when x is observing value between 30 to 60 and uh, what is the Jacobian? From Jacobian this factor is coming. It is This one is coming with, res with, with respect to Jacobian. This one is coming with respect to density of x. Okay. Density of x. This one is coming with respect to Jacobian and simplify you are, you are getting the same PD. 6 by y square the same both value are matching so this is the second approach this jacobian approach is really interesting from computation point of view okay uh, other thing we will discuss in next class